we are in the final countdown to Christmas. Just five full shopping days left. Ramp it up. And CNBC's All America Economic Survey finds 43% of Americans plan to shop online this holiday season. But the majority of respondents will still head out to stores. That is good news for retailers hard hit by e-commerce giants like Amazon and others. Your next guest made his career running the nation's biggest malls. Dan Hurwitz is now chairman of the International Council of Shopping Centers and runs Raider Hill Advisors. Dan, welcome. Please dispel one myth I believe exists, and maybe it's not true, is that the Internet, while growing still, is not going to kill everybody because Americans fundamentally, A, like to shop. It can be fun. And it's an experience. I'm not defending all retailers, but I'm not, Amazon's not gonna put everybody out of business, is it? No, they're not gonna put everyone out of business. And in fact, they've taught a lot of retailers how to distribute goods properly. So they're actually gonna help a lot of retailers thrive. At the end of the day, in our business, the best merchant wins. Whether it's Amazon, whether it's Macy's, whether it's whomever, whether it's Target, whether it's Walmart, we've all learned never to bet against Walmart. So, so as a practical matter, if you can have a bricks and mortar presence and a digital presence mm -hmm. at the same time, you're going to be a winner. Who's you, doing it right right now? Well, Target's doing it right. Walmart's doing it right. Doing it right. Best Buy's doing it great. And what's happening is 70% of those people that go into a store, buy online, pick up in store, are also buying something else in the store. So the cohesion between the two, between the bricks and mortar and the digital, is what's making people successful. And those that aren't doing it successful will ultimately fail. I, you know, it's a, two out of three of those, by the way, Minneapolis You're companies right. there, giddy two up. great companies, uh, I, I do, I do, yeah, I do wonder if, if, they're, if that's the hidden part of the retail story, Dan, that fewer, not enough people are talking about, which is when you go into a store, you're probably going to come out with something you did not anticipate buying. Totally. Online, you tend to just target a specific thing and buy that. That's kind of the lost revenue of retailers that people don't talk about. They don't talk about it, and, but it's still happening because the upsell when you go and you buy online and you still pick up in store, because don't forget, people are going to be incentivized to pick up in the store because retailers lose money shipping you goods for free. So they're going to have to figure out a better way to get you into the store, and when they get you into the store, there's an upsell, and that upsell is a highly profitable upsell, and we're going to see more of that as, a, as, as this evolution continues. But the whole concept of an apocalypse of bricks and mortar is really, it was overblown, we talked about it here for years that it was overblown. <laughs> Best Buy was the best example. People were talking about them disappearing. They've done a phenomenal job turning it around, as has Target, as has Walmart, and that'll continue. But, Dan, the, the apocalypse around department stores, they're noticeably absent from your, your analysis here. So yep. are, are they dead? Um, and, again, so, so tied to the mall experience you know so well. I think some will struggle to survive, and some will get it done right. I mean, I happen to be a fan of Macy's. I like, I like what Macy's is doing. I think they, they have a very strong management team. They have great real estate. What are they doing? They have sophisticated buyers. They're reinventing their inventory. They're looking, they're sourcing the right goods at the right price at the right time. They have to make the experience better, obviously. But in many respects in our business, people talk about experience. Mm -hmm. The merchandise is the experience. You can have a great experience. If you have lousy merchandise, it's not going to work. And Macy's has a, a great buying group that I wouldn't bet against. So you mentioned uh, just that upsell with that, that kind of uh, omnichannel approach. And, and Amazon's making a lot of other retailers better. And that's clearly the case with like names like Target. They forced them to make these yeah. sorts of investments. Do you see Amazon doing another sort of acquisition of a bricks-and-mortar retailer? Because obviously that was their first step because they are just online, or they were online. They're getting 50% of new online online um, growth, right? But, but don't they need to broaden it out? Wouldn't a Best Buy have been a great retailer for them to kind of own nationally? I think there would have been a number of great retailers for Amazon to own nationally. The question is, if they really have a store, forget about, forget about Whole Foods for a minute, yeah. just an Amazon store, I'm not so sure what they put in it. You know, one of the things there, they're great distributors of goods, but if you walk into their stores today, I don't know if you would argue that they run a great experiential store with terrific merchandise. So I think they have to run a different kind of store but I do think there's an opportunity for them to, to have expand their reach dramatically. Well, I, I, do, I do hope just for the sake of places like Northeast Ohio, where there's a lot of unemployment, yeah. these giant hulking empty malls, which are, you know, they bring down the value of everything around them, yeah. that an Amazon or somebody else will buy them and use them as distribution centers that could bring jobs and whatever. We'll see. That's a different conversation.